Hey everyone, in this video, let's do a review of LTX Studio. In order to do so, here we are at ltx.studio and we're all logged into the app. And this is what you're going to see right off the bat. So if you want to jump right into a project, all you got to do is click on new project. We'll go ahead and do that. And we do have uh, some options here as far as our subscriptions go. Let's go ahead and take a look at that first. So we can upgrade to standard. If we look at the monthly, then we're looking at $35 a month for LTX Studio. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the plans and features. So with the free version, you get 3,600 computing seconds a month. And uh, that will give you like maybe one or two projects, but uh, you will burn through that pretty quick. And then with the light, you're looking at $12 a month, $15 a month, really, if you're going with the monthly subscription. And that gives you 8,600 computing seconds a month. Now, if you really want to get anything out of it, you're probably going to need to go with the standard and we're looking at 35 for that and 125 for the pro. So that gives you an idea of what you are getting into. Now, we'll take a look here at a, a new project. And I guess it's uh, not going to even let us get into that. Let's see here. Nope, it's not going to. So let's take a look at some of our previous projects then. This is uh, essentially the same thing. But um, one thing that I will mention about starting a new project is when you get started with LTX Studio, there are some interesting options to get you moving where you can create a script and it will really kind of guide you through the process. Um, we'll uh, take a look at our project here because once you get through those initial steps, then this is what you're going to find. We have our different scenes. So you can see here we have our different scenes and each scene has a variety of shots. There's a variety of things we can do within this. We can uh, generate images and we can also generate motion. And just so you know, that's where most of your computing uh, seconds are going to be going into is generating the motion. Because once you generate the motion for each of your shots, it really is going to uh, take a quite a few of those uh, computing seconds. So this is why I say that you're really not going to be able to get away with too much without doing the pro version and as it is with video generation a lot of times you don't get the results that you're looking for the first time so sometimes you got to do that a few times um, you can do this with a voiceover or if you want to uh, just have it basically with um, uh, voices and um, kind of something a little bit more traditional as far as that goes, then you can do that. But if you want it to be sort of uh, narrated, then you can choose the voiceover there. Let's actually head back here. Let me pull up a different project because I can pull up something that actually has motion in it. So you could see for yourself. And we'll just take a look at uh, a couple of these shots. So some of the shots are going to turn out pretty good. Like that one's quite nice. We'll just kind of go through here, but here's a good example. This one's a bit strange. We got our cigarette here and it uh, looks more like a, a, a candle. Um, and so this is kind of what I mean that sometimes you're not going to get the results that you're looking for right off the bat. Now, Keep in mind that this is from a previous model and recently LTX Studio has been updated to include Google VO2. So let's go ahead and just check that out here really quick so that you could see the difference in quality. Let's see here. It's not letting me play, so let's just head back. We'll just hover over so you can see for yourself. 
So obviously the quality with VO2 is really quite nice. I have been playing around with VO2 and it is a really solid model for sure. So that's going to mean you're going to get a lot more out of LTX Studio. However, that being the case, VO2 is a very high cost model. So you can use the LTX V or you can use the VO2, but you are looking at a higher cost for the VO2. So just be aware of that. And um, when you are creating your projects, you are really going to want to make sure that all of your shots look as tight as possible before you generate any motion. So if you notice any of your images look a little bit strange, then it's probably best to redo them. And I would recommend that you really go through your scenes and your shots and make sure that everything is as tight as possible before you generate anything because then you're going to use up all of your computing seconds and you're not going to get too much out of that. So for example, there might be some inconsistency with your characters. Let's see if we can... Uh, see a good example here so this uh looks pretty good but there are some shots where the main character does look quite different and if we check out our cast so we have our it's not showing me right now but basically you have your cast and it is going to pull from those images in order to attempt character consistency and the results can be kind of iffy sometimes they're okay and other times the character looks quite different from shot to shot this is a better example here so you can see here our female lead doesn't look anything like she does in the previous shot here. So this is where you're going to want to make sure that every shot is as tight as possible before you proceed. And you can see here we've got the regenerate button. So you can regenerate your shots before you uh, create any motion. And um, you can do the motion in the motion editor and you have different shot types. You can enter in your prompts. You've got different tools. And um, it really is quite powerful. But what I would say with LTX Studio is that if you're going into it, you need to make sure that you're going to spend a fair amount of time making sure that all of your shots are correct before you move on because otherwise you're going to get a lot of inconsistency and the end result is just not going to be that great like you can go in and you can just kind of do something on your first try and hope for the best but this is and this is basically what i did with uh with this uh project here i didn't overthink it too much but this is a good opportunity to show you that the results if you don't um, go through and fix everything you're going to get a lot of weird stuff like in this case here we've got the pen coming out of the hand and just a lot of strangeness in that regard so if you are going to spend money for ltx studio i just recommend that you plan to do a deep dive, make sure that everything looks as tight as possible before you generate any video because you are going to use your computing seconds very quickly. And if you really want to get the most out of it, you're going to need to use Google VO2. The LTX uh, model is, is not bad, but it's not great either. And the, uh, the results are kind of iffy. So that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment and like and subscribe. And don't forget to set your notifications for more helpful tips. Also, if you take a look in the description, you will find a link to our link tree. There you'll find our top AI tool recommendations. Go ahead and click on any of those links to get started. You'd be helping us out as well, and we would greatly appreciate it.